Hello ladies! In today's video we are going to talk about how to have orgasms during intercourse. Mm. So I am Celine Remy, the Intimacy Angel, and I am here to help you bring your sexy back in life. So before we get started, if you love to have orgasms by yourself or with your partner and anytime, anywhere, click the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's look at what you need in order to ha have an orgasm. So if you want to have an orgasm during intercourse, you need to know how your body works. So you need to be able to have an orgasm on your own. If that's something that you haven't yet achieved, that's what you need to spend time doing first. For most women, Penetration alone is not going to give them an orgasm. They'll need to have extra stimulation, especially focused on their clitoris. So looking at your clit, finding your clit, playing with your clit and stimulating it in a way that can help you have an orgasm is going to be absolutely essential. When it comes to orgasms, our biggest sex organ is between our ears, it's our brain. And what I mean by that is what's going on in your head can affect your ability to really relax, let go and have an orgasm. There's kind of a misconception that orgasms are like flowers or chocolate, something that somebody else from the outside can give to you. It's not really what happens when you have an orgasm. Having an orgasm is all about your ability to surrender, to let go and to open up. And it's something that you do for yourself. While someone else might be doing some good moves or things that feel good and can help you get there, ultimately it is your own responsibility to make your own orgasms happen. So you also need to be able to turn off the mind chatter. We women are so good. We have something called diffuse awareness. That means that we are constantly aware of multiple things happening at once. And when we are in the bedroom, we might be thinking about other things like our to-do list or what meal we're going to be preparing or the laundry or anything else that is on this never-ending list of things to do. And if you are so focused on something else, it's going to become much harder to be able to experience an orgasm. And the higher stress that you experience, the more stressed out you are, the less oxytocin your body is going to produce. When you are stressed, you produce cortisol. Cortisol or stress hormones will hinder your own production of your sex hormones. And so finding ways to reduce your stress level, whether it's your mental tension, whether it's physical stress, in so many different ways is going to be essential. My trick is to focus on activities that boost your oxytocin. Things like, for me, it's like cooking, baking, uh, dancing, or going for a walk on the beach, watching a romantic movie, reading a good book. Things that help me feel very good in my body, feel feminine and feel beautiful. These type of activities are the activities that will help raise your oxytocin. So focus on doing things during the day that will release some of that excess stress that you're having that will help to boost more oxytocin production in your body so that you can be more relaxed and prepared to enjoy orgasms when you are in the bedroom. Now you also need to really know your body and you, what you like and ask for it. You can't just expect your partner to read your mind and know what to do um, when you're in the bedroom because things do change. So it's okay to ask for what you want and what you need. Just do it in a sweet way. Share about like, oh, you know what feels so, what would feel so good right now is if you slowly entered me and thrusted in and out of me while staring into my eyes and telling me how much you love me or there's like oh keep going I love this move don't stop like be very specific in the exact techniques and movements that your partner can do to help you get to an orgasm 
Most women go too quickly to penetration without being fully engorged, without taking the time for all the erectile network and tissues that are located inside to be really engorged and swollen. That's kind of the equivalent of a guy having intercourse with a semi or no erection. While it's possible, that's not how you're going to have the best sensations. So focusing on having more foreplay or more massage and things that will increase the circulation, make sure that your labias and your vulva is fully engorged and puffed up and that you're really at that place where you're begging for intercourse and for penetration. So I'm going to give you a few pointers of some of the things you can do in the bedroom. So number one, you want to make sure that when you get to the bedroom, you are mostly relaxed and that you can let go. Number two, you want to be present in your body rather than in your head. You want to take your time. Don't beat yourself up if you're thinking that you're taking too much time or going too slow. It's normal to need some extra stimulation. Ask for what you want and need and focus on doing some good foreplay in circulation so that you are fully engorged before you get to penetration. You want to make sure that things are lubed and smooth and, you know, if you need extra lubrication, use some good lube. If you are very juicy, just use your natural lubrication. Wherever you at, make sure things are lubed like a lot because the more lube, the better it feels. Now you want to make sure that you also include your clitoris into the experience and it's hard sometimes depending on the location of your clitoris to have the stimulation happen on its own. Uh, some women have the clitoris that's located a little bit further away from the entrance to the vaginal canal which can make it really difficult to get stimulation on the clitoris through penetration alone. So you use your own hands or use a vibrator or something Something that can add that clitoral stimulation while your partner is penetrating you. Get creative and vary the position. If a position doesn't really work for you, change it. Don't just chase things and sensations. Go slower, connect with your partner and figure out what feels good. When something feels good, stick to it. Give it some good rhythm and focus. And remember, the lovemaking is not so much about the destination, it's more about the journey. So rather than having that focus that you have to orgasm absolutely every single time, also be curious about like, how much more can you feel during lovemaking? I have things that I call orgasmic sensations. They're not always the mind-blowing orgasms, but they're like little tingle that I feel over my body and like warm for relaxation sensations that I feel. And all of these are like orgasmic waves that feel so good. So don't just want to have only one way of experiencing an orgasm. Become very open-minded in the many ways that your body can feel pleasure. You want to make sure too that you include a lot of your erogenous zones, things that are also like your nipples or breasts or your inner thighs or your inner um, elbows. I mean, every one is a little bit different or your neck. Like what are the areas that feel really good and either stroke yourself or have your partner stroke you. And most importantly, speak up. <laughs> Ask for what you want and need, but also allow sound to come through your throat. There is a connection between your throat, your mouth, and your genitals. And when you make sounds, you also activate your vagus nerve, which is really important in your ability to have orgasms. So give yourself permission to moan and groan and voice up what you need and want. It will go a long way in your ability to experience orgasms in the bedroom. So remember, you are worthy of orgasms. Own them, claim them, go for them. You deserve pleasure and you are amazing. All right, thanks for watching today's video and I will be seeing you in the next video.